everybody, it's Peter Elvidge and Tony Quest back with Seeing Beneath the Surface, episode 51. We are past our halfway mark to triple digits. It's been an awesome road thus far, and we're starting out a new year with a new show. It's 2019, but before we get into, you know, talking about the new year, some of our new plans, you know, different things, uh, Tony, how are you doing today, and how you been, and uh, what is on your mind thus far starting this conversation? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm doing, I'm actually doing very well, and um, I'll say December was interestingly challenging when I had to deal with illness, you know, which is like one of those things that that kind of happens in the winter time. Um, while I was uh, thinking about moving into the next year, and uh, things don't always fall into place the way you intend. And you take the ball, whatever shape it is, and run with it, you know? And so I could tell you a little more about that after and things are okay. I say things are doing very well. And I'm really very, very excited about 2019. How about you? What are your plans, Peter? Yeah, most definitely. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, you, you going through that towards in December. And, you know, hopefully things straighten out for you um, going into 2019. Cause I personally, um, I don't know if it's just like so many things, like being busy or so many different things changing or what it might be. But I just, I'm, I have good feelings about this year. Like not that I didn't about last year, but just really good feelings. Um, like <clears throat> for the longest time, uh, we've been doing, you know, like seeing beneath the surface. And we've been doing it, you know, first it was uh, YouTube-bound, and then we went from it being YouTube-bound to it being podcast-bound, and then it went from different syndications to radio, and now we're syndicated with three radio stations, and we have our, you know, podcast with multiple different places, and it's just, um, I'm thinking on the lines of, like, not only growth of the sh- of the show, but also just... Um, many different things in my aspects. Like I, I've been finding that I used to do a lot of social media management and things for like my business. And I'm, I'm seeing myself go away from like the PR or like, you know, promoting people or things like that kind of vibes. I'm seeing myself in this year going towards like a lot of video and audio content. I don't know why, but there's just like a major pull there. And yeah. um, so, so instead of doing, like, you know, promotion for people, it would be more like, you know, collaborations or, you know, maybe doing some video editing, things like that. So that's that's at least my beginning thoughts on <laughs> kind of okay. how, how things have changed up this year. You've done a lot um, in terms of this stuff last year. I mean, from I guess from where I sit, you were very successful and also very efficient as far as, you know, putting – uh, your content out there, and I was very honored to be part of it to an extent. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. And like, you know, like I said, you know, you and so many other great people just, you know, make shows like this happen, and we just, we have some, such a great community, and we have such great conversations, and it's been awesome, and, you know, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be at episode fifty-one, you know, if, if it didn't wow. all of a sudden catch, you know, and things. And mm-hmm. and I I know we're, I know we're gonna make it to triple digits. I know that for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, definitely. <laughs> I, I agree with that a hundred percent. It's inevitable. Yep. <laughs> it is um, inevitable. We'll be triple digits soon. We'll have to kind of well, celebration when we get to episode one hundred. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll have to come to New York and I'll have to do something in person because uh, if you guys didn't know out there, uh, Tony is in New York and I'm here in Minnesota. Um, and the really interesting thing is that our radio stations that we're connected to is uh, one's in Minnesota, one's in Pittsburgh, and one's in Florida. So we're just kind of like all over the place. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's very much it. And it goes globally and people listen to us all over the world. You know, yep. thanks to you, Peter. Thanks to you. You know, and because uh, it's not because of me, because you know how to put it, it out there. You know, I basically have an easy job to just sit here and have a conversation with an interesting person, which would be you or whoever our guests might be at the time. 
Yep. And 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 the good thing is too is that we're looking at some more awesome guests coming up in the next few days or next few weeks too. So mm-hmm. we're gonna have many mm-hmm. more awesome conversations to have too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of talented people. A lot of talent, pe- talented people. And and astute people have crossed our path. Some of the educators mm-hmm. that have come on and that we'll have on again. And um, I'm looking forward to delivering more content to our audience. Yep. Yeah, and and that's so something else I thought about too, like coming into the new year, is um, I've been thinking a lot about like accessibility and like making sure content is universally accessible. And I thought to myself, um, you know, like what what would be considered the most universally accessible type of content? And I thought about it, and this is partly why I'm doing transitional like video and audio type things, just because. Um, it, it, it's very interesting, so you wouldn't think about it, but video is one of the wild, wild, uh, I can't speak today, is uh, yeah. one of the wildest, wildest ex- uh, wildly accessible media format. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, not good for me today, but. Yeah, sorry, a little time time, yeah. huh? Yeah, a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. but the reason being is because you can have a transcript for those who can't, you know, see like, um, the captions and things, but are able to, you know, well, you, the idea is you have a caption for, you know, those who can't see or hear the content. You have captions for those who can see it but can't hear it. You have audio that's there if you can't see it, which would be audio description. And then you would have it regular for, for basic users, uh, which right. I think is really fun. So it's it's been something that I've been considering. But with, like, our content, um like for the show, I mean, we have captions, we have transcripts, we have descriptions. Um, we don't have audio description, but I don't mm-hmm. think, you know, I mean, because we're talking to each other, there's not really a reason for audio description. But <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <You know. laughs> but, I hear you um, on that one. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about that. I just, you know, thinking as we more and more get, you know, connected, more technology mm-hmm. and more things. Yeah, it seems like a logical way to go. Yeah, and we, you know, and like I even encourage, encourage our audience to to contact us because we're very we're very accessible. You're very accessible through Twitter and um, also Facebook, right, Pete? Yep. And I'm very yeah. accessible through through LinkedIn. Yeah, if you hang out on LinkedIn and um, uh, do you also have Facebook too, or do you not? not, not uh, I have, I have typically a Facebook, message. Well, I have a Facebook thing, and I I, I do some instant messaging, but um, I would say that I, I live more on LinkedIn because I love the, the global quality of it. You know, because I've actually it's been a wonderful things for me and my endeavors, and um, I've gotten like gigs. Through LinkedIn, you know, I've gotten speaking uh, engagements, and I've also gotten writing engagements where people have asked me to write things because they saw my LinkedIn profile, and I'm I'm really due to put some more content up as soon as I regroup for 2019, you know, in the next week or two. Yep, and um, I think that's like. Like, I, I was thinking about at the beginning of the year, like, uh, I guess resolutions, you know, like how everyone mm-hmm. thinks of resolutions. And it's a weird thing because, um, I, you know, I, I definitely have that same thought as you, like, you know, I want to create more content. I want to create more stuff. You know, it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's part for fun and part for business. You just have a drive for it. You know, you just have that feeling right now. Yeah. Um, and and to be fair about it too, like if anybody out there but like you don't have this drive or like maybe yeah. you like maybe you want it but you're just not quite feeling it and where you are, you know, explore. Try try just be completely random. Try something completely random. Like uh mm-hmm. one of the best examples I can give is um uh is a friend of mine uh wanted to do more cooking. And the thing is is that Basically, you know, they were cooking and they wanted to go buy a recipe 
and Mm -hmm. they didn't have like all the ingredients they had and you know they're just like oh well you know i'd like to cook more but you know this this recipe isn't going to work out and i told him i said just be random with it just try some other ingredients and things you might find you know so to speak your own type of recipe kind of thing and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know they did and it was fun it turned out awesome and you know that i think in that instance like if you, whether it be cooking or something else, just kind of right. play around with it, you know? <laughs> so, you know, cooking is kind of like a science and an art at the yep. same time, you know? I mean, something you baking, I would say I'm not a good baker. It's not something I'm, it's not my forte, not that I'll say that I do have a forte, I won't say what it is, but um, in terms of cooking, but baking is not it. But I do uh-huh. appreciate the fact that it's just, it's a science, the chemistry, you know. And um, I'm actually ghostwriting a book for somebody, a cookbook for someone, you know, which is part of my goals for 2019 is to finish that book for that person. And um, in just in writing it, I can write. I understand how to read a recipe, you know, and I understand all that kind of stuff. I kind of somewhere in my experience have picked up that that learning. But um, yep. when I read this, which is this woman is actually done, and I'm kind of just, like fleshing out her book for her and writing it and getting it together, I realized, you know, how special it is that someone would be able to to actually put a special book together of recipes like this. And I'll reveal, yeah. I'll do the big reveal soon and not quite yet because it's not my book. But yeah. Um, You'll be hearing about it. This cookbook is very special. I'll say, so I'll start to give a hint. It's a little bit otherworldly, but, you know, it's tasty. I tasted a couple of the recipes. Yeah. All right. Um, most definitely, we, and I definitely know that everyone's going to look forward to seeing that and hearing about it, too. So we'll, we'll definitely include that in an update episode because I think, um, I think what would be fun, too, it just kind of like thoughts about our show too. If we did like a mid year kind of like you, you like we're doing now, we're talking about the new year kind of like what we're going mm-hmm. into, some thoughts for our viewers. I think it'd be kind of yeah. fun to do like a mid year kind of thing and just see how things are going and like right. you know, yeah. updates and things. I think that'd be cool. And that gives people mm-hmm. gives you guys, viewers, uh an option too, like for instance, like even during this show. You know, like, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts for the New Year's? Or, or you know, what are your thoughts, you know, that's six months into the year. You know, I mean, are you you're achieving what you need to? Or are you not? Do you need help, support, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it might be? You know, get in the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's really important to, um, I found, you know, over the years that if you're an artist, and I'm an artist and I of many stripes, and what I'd say is that it's really important to follow the business plan. And last year, 2018, I learned how significant it is to follow your business plan. So things don't go exactly the way you wanted it to. If you have a, a business plan, you can always, like, acquiesce to the plan, go back to it, and, see, and start to follow it again. You know, follow your plan. And usually within the plan, there's – I always say there's – there are escape clauses that you might put in there or alternative plan B or of whatever. But, um, yeah. you know, and I think when you get to this this kind of a time at the beginning of the year, um, what I do is I meet with my mentors at the beginning of the year and I tweak my plan and decide, okay, I got through 2018. Did I achieve everything that I intended to achieve? And I look at what I actually was able to acquire in that year in terms of learning, knowledge, and also um, my bottom line, like how many successes did I have in terms of being able to deliver my art, you know, or deliver my public speaking and yeah. follow my plan. And did I, follow, did, I, did I live up to my resolution, you know? And then and I, it, yeah. following and see what the next step is and be clear about it. Yeah, and that makes total sense um, because I I I do it kind of the same way um, where I, it's it's an interesting idea. Um, 
I don't really do it by, uh, I mean, I do it by business plan as well, but that's not really my, my primary, um, kind of look back, so to speak. Like I have these, I have a writing that I do like uh, every year, whether it be either before the new year or just after the, you know, New Year's Eve or day. Um, and I look back at the previous years and see just like, you know, what did I write? You know, what did I want? Where, where did I want to go? Things like that. And I would do kind mm-hmm. of that reflection. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I would, I would look at, you know, I'd evaluate everything, you know, am I where I want to be in things? And, um, to, to be fair about it, I mean, if you guys are curious too, is, I, I mean, I'm definitely ahead of, I was ahead of my goals, uh, last year, so I'm very happy going into 2019. I'm, a, I'm ahead of the game, thank goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, congratulations. But, um, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but, you know, you just, if you have those, like, you know, those moments, like, you know, for instance, whether it be business plan or reflecting on something, like, I know a friend of mine does, um, does videos, does, like, you know, maybe, like, a 20-minute video and then looks back at it and then does one that current year and compares. You know, there's all sorts of different fun things you could do. Just make it interesting and make it you. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, you know. That's a good way to look at it, and you can literally look at it. And I think it's um, it's good to to hold yourself accountable for things. Like I often think that how many people did I help last year, and how did I do it? You know, and did yeah. I help myself? And did I help myself? And did I live up to my own, you know, um, standards for myself? Potential. I'm, yeah, potential, right? And I know for 2018. <laughs> I promised myself that I would not discount the obvious and overanalyze. You know, some things are just blatantly obvious. And so I decided, I made a decision last year that if something's obvious, I'm going to take it for what it is and deal with it the way it seems obvious I should, you know? Uh And sometimes that obvious thing might be that to engage in one thing or with engage with this particular entity or people and to disengage with others. And there are people yeah. that I had to disengage with. And it just made sense mm-hmm. like they're not doing we're not doing any good for each other or this person is more or this particular company or person entity is not something that's beneficial to me and mm-hmm. I have to let it go. Or it's obvious that this is working, so let me focus on this. So then I stay with that and develop it further. And that's what I'm thinking uh-huh. about for 2019 as opposed to trying to beat a dead horse, as I say, you know, and also putting my ego aside, uh-huh. you know, and looking at yeah. it for what it is. See it for what it is, not for, you know, my ego reasons or, you know, um, overanalyzing something that's really obvious to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and in and, and that too, it made me think of something in particular. Um, like going going back to a, a point we said earlier, you know, about like let's say if you didn't quite meet your goals, you, you know, between last year and this year and you're going yeah. forward. And mm-hmm. like, you know, like you said, you know, sometimes you have to just gauge from, you know, different people, you know, to get other opportunities with others. Um, one thing I definitely can say is that maybe if, for instance, like if there's a goal or maybe something that you didn't meet, maybe it was mm-hmm. for a reason. Maybe, maybe it wasn't uh-huh, something yeah. you didn't quite have a spark in, or you know, or you know, it could it could very well be anything, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. But I like for this year, like I love doing personally for me, I love doing social media and I love doing I love doing promotion. But I'm seeing personally a change in myself where I'm I'm finding myself to do more video and audio content. So I'm seeing myself going into that realm more so this year, which means, you know, changing things up because it's not like I didn't meet my goals for that, but I just, you know, you just kind of have that internal feeling. And yeah. that can be for other people. So, like, if someone's in my situation and thinking this too and they didn't meet their goals for social media or whatever it might be, you know, then maybe it's time for a change, you know? You never know. Just, yeah. Depends yeah. on you. Maybe it's time. <laughs> I like that. Maybe it's time or maybe it's obvious the time. You know, it's again, yeah. some things are just obvious. And mm-hmm. we tend to dismiss it. Just, you know, it's not unusual for us to dismiss the obvious. 
you know? Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it could be for many reasons. Sometimes because it might be too painful to pay, or maybe it's not exactly the dream that you really had in mind, or whatever the reason. Um, I oh, second. Um, phone. Um. I think that it's okay. very important. I think it's very important to to recognize these things, and it's not always so easy, you know. And we were talking before the show. I said sometimes in your own family, you know, you might have to disengage for one reason or another in order to, uh-huh. you know, maintain your feelings of love for your own family as opposed to becoming an adversary, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just it, I'm just making a comment on that one, and. Uh, Oh, the obvious is the obvious. You can't discount mm-hmm. the obvious. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, too, is like, so I had, I had, um, I had this particular, like, it was like a small kind of part of my business where I was doing, um, I was doing like, like setting up, like social media networks for people, right? And, and this wouldn't be like, you know, setting up and then promoting them, things like that. This would just be setting setting them up, you know, so that people can promote them themselves. I, like, I enjoyed that. But um, at the same time, I I realized, you know, that I had to, you know, I had to, I, I, I realized that I liked doing it, but I liked doing you know, a few other things more. Like I had other passions in bigger areas that took more time. And yeah. in a way, it, in a way, it, it sucked because, you know, I had to give that up. You know, I had to, mm-hmm. you know, say to myself, you know, I have to keep going. But at the same time, I'm also very happy that, you know, I took the initiative to, you know, kind of disengage from that and move on to bigger projects. Because I definitely know, like, that's a part of my business. But I can imagine, like, let's say if you – if you are a business owner and yeah. you, you're, let's say you're not meeting your goals of your business or something, you know, going into, for instance, 2019, it might be a very hard pill, hard pill to swallow, but it might be an obvious pill of maybe, you know, maybe it's time to change up the business. Maybe it's time to sell it. Maybe it's time to do something else. And mm-hmm. the thing is, is with our minds, you know, we'll, we'll tend to make it a little bit more complex. So it doesn't seem as obvious, but you know, there are, there are times you just, if you keep finding yourself going back to the same answer over and over and over again, despite, you know, thinking about other avenues, you know, that's something to consider because I've been there before. And I, I know how bad yeah. it sucks to, you know, to go forward, but hey, you know. <laughs> I think also, I think what you're saying is so valid, but I think also as, as artists, as artists, it's it most well, I won't say most. I don't say no most artists, but I've seen a trend with artists not to look at themselves as a business or a sole proprietor. And again, embracing that whole idea of the starting artist, which is something I like to throw water on, because yep. I find it I find it very stereo. It's a it's a stereotype, uh, and it's also an offensive stereotype. You know, considering yep. artists have a special talent that most people don't have, yeah. you know, it's, it's a gift. And I think as an artist myself, I feel an obligation to acknowledge that part of myself and to value it because I, it was a gift I was given, you know, and I don't think that, I think it's important not to, I think it's important to acknowledge it and respect it within yourself as opposed to, trying to use, I mean, I've seen people, artists use the starving artist stereotype as an excuse for everything that they don't have. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I really want to walk the walk and talk the talk without, without, oh, yeah. sounding, caval- without sounding cavalier about it. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you, you know, you get money because you can prove that what you do is valuable. Sometimes people give you money for it because of that, but if you think of it as you're a starving artist and so you should be giving it away, you know, you're mm-hmm. not only um, putting yourself down, you're putting down all of your contemporaries, your colleague artists by selling I, yourself I cheap. Yeah, and, and I was thinking too, like mm-hmm. if you're an artist, 
for instance, going into the new year, you're going into 2019, and we're we're a few days into January now, mm-hmm. and um. You know, and you're, and you're like an artist, and you're just like, well, gosh, you know, I, 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 I sell my art a little bit, or I haven't sold, you know, art at all, and I've made it, mm-hmm. and it's been, you know, shared, shown, things like that. The yeah. biggest, one of the biggest and absolute, you know, game changers that I can say for artists, you know, to start selling their art or to, you know, get uh, custom orders, whatever it might be, starting mm-hmm. the conversation. And it's very, and it sounds easier than it, than it is, but, uh, you know, it sounds more difficult than it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, because well, it depends on the way you sit. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it depends on who you are. Because if you're, if you're introverted, it might take a little bit of skills to become a little bit extroverted to explain to people. And if you're extroverted, mm-hmm. it, it might take a little bit of time to have a little bit of, you know, patience or to, you know, not to overcome, uh, over complex things. You know, it's, it's a weird, mm-hmm. it's a weird scenario. But basically what I'm saying here is that the conversation or, you know, getting someone jazzed up about your art or talking, you know, just like, even if you have, like, if you have a conversation with someone, like, this is something yeah. I found out. If I can have a conversation with someone about my art and it lasts longer than 10 minutes, they're, they're uh-huh. very invested. And that, and that's usually, that's usually what happens. And people are, you know, like, do you have a link? Do you have a card? Do you have a number? You know, whatever it is. And Mm -hmm. the thing is, is if you can, if you can strike up those conversations, you know, really quickly say what you do, why you're passionate about it, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe even have some of your art on hand. I mean, the best thing with technology today is having your art on hand because you can have paintings or giant, sculptures or whatever it might be on your phone you just take a picture and you have it available for anyone to see at any time and yeah you know <laughs> well it's also interesting how the social media is significant there's a new social newish it's newish i'll say social media that um has sort of come to my attention i'd say was the last year in 2018 called alignable well you know it's sort of like a clone to linkedin in a sense I, that's where I see it, and a lot of people are connecting on Alignable. Now, I connected with a woman very recently, a couple people actually, but she, two people, well, no, one person, and she made a point of, and it's more local, more locally oriented from what I could see. So she made a point of saying she wanted to get together. I like the, what her company does, and she made it happen, and I met with her, and you know, she saw part of my business that she's interested in engaging with. And um, I believe something can happen from this. I'm actually formulating something in my mind to um, make this a profitable endeavor for me because she saw something through LinkedIn on me that she was very intrigued by. And then what she did is she connected with me on Alignable. Uh, through this this company because she knew that it would be somewhat local. And um, I'm going to see what happens. I'm sort of trying to juggle this ball, but um, when I met her, she was very different than I thought she would be business-wise. I was very surprised that I found there was something – well, I wasn't surprised that there would be something in what she does that I'd be interested in. But I was was surprised by little things like she didn't have a business card. That was like stunned, uh-huh. that stunned me. Like you don't have a business card, but I but I was stunned by what she had to offer that she didn't even know that she had that to offer. You know, it, it's just fun. Everybody thinks so differently, and I don't see that she's definitely an, an artist, but she is very inclined to engage with artists because she sees the value, and she sees Maybe, how she yeah. can capitalize on it. I thought it was interesting. But no business mm-hmm. card, which I think I consider the best form of advertising is business card. That's my opinion. If you don't you have know, a website. And, you know, and, and I, I thought of something there while you're, while you're saying that too, um, mm-hmm. that it, it was brought to my attention. So, uh, I could definitely say having business cards is a fantastic thing. Having them on hand is great. Um, yeah. One of the things that was mentioned to me was with my cards, because one of the major things that I want people to know about, you know, is, you know, for instance, accessibility, you know, talking about blindness, visual impairment, things like that. That's mm-hmm. part of what I do. And I thought to myself, you know, because I have the regular, I think it's like 
two by three or something like that business card, some some yeah. sort of size. Uh, I can't quite remember the dimensions, but anyways, um, size, yeah. They they were recommending a friend of mine was recommending to me maybe having a larger card with with larger font and then maybe put and then it being a bigger card. Um, you know, doing like a little bit of braille and then having like your logo on the back. And I, I never thought about it, um, because I've always wanted to do that, but I figured out a really cool way is, um, if I made the cards large print and then I used mm-hmm. what's called a slate and a stylist, I can braille my own cards with my name and things. So yeah. it not only showcases, not only showcases what's important to me, but it also allows those who, you know, of different types who might read the card being able to read the cards. So in a sense of going into the new year, not only is business cards great, but you could also have a lot of really cool ideas or really a lot of fun, um, you know, when you're creating them based upon, you know, what you want people to know. Like I know for a fact I went to, it was some sort of a, it was some sort of establishment surrounding you around like fish and, you know, sea life and things. And their business yeah. cards are shaped like their their business cards are shaped like fish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because then the person so, is very inclined to keep it because it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it it has it's because the cool thing was is that on the one side of the card it was a it was a fish and it was it, depending upon what card you got depended upon what kind of fish it was on the other side. And yeah. and then on the other side it was a it was a like a dark blue and then it had white text and. You know, it was it was fun, and I just I thought about that, and that's something I'm considering on doing is changing up kind of the so to speak normal, you know, normal uh, template that I have for my cards this year to kind yeah. of bring a new mix into things. Okay. Yeah. Just to, just sort of put another little spin on what you do. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. I think identity, I think identity is is shaped with age and, as well, but. You know, I think that going into this year, and and we're in different stations because I feel there's a little bit of a sense of urgency to to do certain things and establish certain things for me because of my age. You know, mm-hmm. even though I I feel like I have time, but you really never know. You know, yeah. but um, so I want to make sure that whatever I do this year is something that I I realize I can I go go that I can actually accomplish. I can change oh, yeah. up my business plan and redo it, and I, I'm a lifelong learner, so there's also an educational component that I like to keep into my general identity, whether I'm teaching or learning, but it tends to be both, you know, and uh, to keep yeah. that quantum learning thing, that quantum learning thing going, but yep. I have to make up my mind exactly what it is I want to achieve, and sometimes you have to do it quantitatively in terms of how much money do I want to make this year? How many people, followers do I want to have in this social media this year? You know? And um, yeah. does it really matter? How many paintings am I going to do? Am I going to keep doing this part of what I do? Has it been profitable? Yeah, to an extent. But is it profitable based on the time I'm spending? And where am I really getting the most satisfaction? And where am I getting the most tangible re- results? Yeah. Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And it's always business. Sometimes it's your personal life, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's this thing in your personal life that you want to accomplish. It may eclipse, you know, um, things in your business or vice versa. Maybe the business is going to eclipse the personal life. And I have to decide how I want that really to look, you know? I always say to myself, do I want to get married again? Well, the answer is, mm-hmm. well, I don't know, maybe. You know, or do I want to, what do I want to be 10 years from now? Which for me is a big number. For you, it's uh-huh. not such a big number. You know, 10 <laughs> years from now, you'll probably have a five-year-old, you know, running around. <laughs> for yeah. you, you know, for me, it's, it means something else. You know, yeah. so I have to think that realistically, at the same time, you don't want to shut yourself down from for think, for thinking creatively and also thinking in a way that, the world is still open to you. I mean, I feel sometimes like I just graduated from high school and I'm just entering uh-huh. the world. And there are times I feel like I'm like an old soul that has so much uh-huh. foundation. And what am I going to do with all of this? Yeah. 
to keep it to yeah. myself. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I can I can relate because the the thing is is that with this year, like I used to, well, I I mean I still am, but I see I used to like work constantly, like um, a little like a little while ago, I would probably say yeah, maybe half maybe half a year, maybe a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. I used to work like seven a.m. to like six or seven p.m. something like that. You know, yeah. and it used to be like mm-hmm. all day kind of thing. You know, like it was this constant work, you know, doing things and pro- posting all that. And mm-hmm. I can definitely say in the midst of going into the new year, like, uh, like finding that, that newer balance, like I, my plan is, you know, um, eight to five and that's it, you know, having family time and things like that, you know, because the yeah. one thing that I can definitely say is no matter what, no matter what type of job I do, family is, family has always come first. And yes. the thing is, is just the way that, the way that the new year is coming and the way that things are adjusting, it's just, you know, I, I yeah. can, I can relate to making sure that your, your to- whole entire, whole entire time counts. And frankly, because of that, that's why there's some changes, you know, like into what I'm doing, you know, like videos yeah. and audio and things like that. Yeah. For me, at least, they they can be taken care of while I'm doing other things. So, you know, right. there's a little bit more automation to things. So, <laughs> Yeah, and you're very good at that. You're very, yeah. you know, I'm, I was talking about you to someone and talking about how you do these amazing things despite the fact that people don't know that you're without sight. And what you're doing, actually, technically, I, I have not even a clue, you know, but somehow you just do it. Like, we'll hang up the phone, and the show will be mm-hmm. over, and I'm just going to have to do what I have to do. I have, like, a pile of stuff waiting for me that, to address it, and I did make a resolution this year, and I haven't lived up to it yet, but uh-huh. I still have time. I'm not making it official until after a certain date when I have a meeting with my mentors, who I take all my uh-huh. advice from, who I just yep. want to mention – my mentors are from the Small Business Development Corporation. And they actually mentor people in business for free. And um, I'm one of the few artists that they deal with, but they, they treat me as a, as a small business because that's what I am. As an artist, you're by default. You're a sole proprietor because you got to do it all by yep. yourself. And I know that I have a, a list of stuff I have to get done, and one of the things, I promised myself being I'm writing two books this year is that I, I'm intent on finishing both these books in 2019. You know, one's yep. a fiction novel and one's um, I'm writing this cookbook for this person as a ghostwriter, you know, and you know, I made an arrangement for my payment for that, which is a little, yep. it's, you know, it's, I think it's fair, you know. But um, yep. I'm also writing my own thing. And, you know, if, if I don't write every single day, when I go to sleep at night, did I, I always say to myself, did I write today? And if I didn't write today, I feel bad, you know? But then yeah. I say, what did I do? I'm dealing with paperwork. I'm dealing with the accountant. I'm dealing with all this stuff. And in dealing with my mentors, I will ask them when I see them next week, how can I deal with this? Do I have to get an intern? It's likely I'm going to be looking for an intern that can do all of this, like, that's in the business um, curriculum that whatever they're working in, that's going to help me deal with all these things that are not my forte. Because they have told me my strength in my own business is in the creativity, and so often it falls as, like, kind of like the last thing I do because of all the tedium of just dealing with the numbers and, scheduling and you know there's you know I need I, I I don't I think it's it's important to know when you need help and take it yep. it doesn't make me weak because I know I need help yep it's just just how it is you know sometimes you need help and sometimes you know you just you, you go with it and, right um, right yeah um yeah and the thing is too is that I, I know that we're definitely going to have more updates for the, you know, we're both definitely going to have more updates as to, you know, our progress in the coming year. Um, you know, some new developments. I know we're going to mention them in other shows. 
Uh, but mm-hmm. for right now, we're we're rounding off to episode 51. So, Tony, yeah. where can we find you and uh, all those great social media links? Well, you can find me on, on LinkedIn.com. I have a website that lets you do perpetually in development. <laughs> Maybe one day it will actually be up, you know, and, and running and, and good. Um, it will be. It is actually up and running. Um, but it needs to be tweaked. But it's energystoners.com. But... I'm going to encourage people um, if they're interested in energy stoners, which is my jewelry company, please feel free to email me directly at energystoners at gmail.com, and you'll reach me directly. Eventually, I'll be able to to communicate with you through the the site. And also, always feel free to contact me through LinkedIn. Just put my name in the search engine at LinkedIn. It's Tony Quest. T-O-N-I, Q-U-E-S-T, and I'd just love to get your feedback on this show and also my um, YouTube show, uh, Talk with TQ, which I, I, I upload episodes periodically, and um, I do appreciate the feedback, and I thank the audience for that. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, please, everyone, make sure to go check out Tony's information. That would be fantastic. Um, you guys can find me via the Perseverance Network. My name is Peter Elvidge, E-L-V-I-D-G-E. Uh, you can find our radio and podcasting networks being iTunes, Google Play, all those great different podcasting networks, including our three radio stations, the Perseverance Entertainment Network out of Minnesota, the Helium Radio Network based out of Florida, and the VIP Internet Radio Network based out of Pittsburgh. You can find us in all of those stations. Uh, but otherwise, you know, we had a great conversation. We're looking forward to Episode 52 with another great guest. Uh, we yes. hope you guys join us because I know that it's going to be an awesome conversation. So thank you, Tony, so very much for being here for Episode 51. We're past our halfway mark to triple digits, and we're going to make our way there very soon. Okay, thank you, Peter. All right, have a good one. You too. Contrary, doing a different, different.